Hi, welcoming you all back to the Formula Chat YouTube channel. Today, we're going to take a close-up look at a classic Formula One car, the championship-winning Brabham BT20 from 1966. If you're liking the content, please grab us a like and grab a subscribe. Any questions, please drop them in the bar below. Be delighted to come back to you. My name is Rob Jayner, and we're going to go and take a look at this glorious Formula One car. So this is it, the classic looking Brabham BT20. And it is absolutely stunning in that classic long cigar shape that it has. It looks absolutely glorious, really well prepared this car, uh, and certainly not many of them around. Um, it's the car that won the world title in 1966. Uh, by a uh, used by Sir Jack Brabham and Denny Holm that year. Um, Sir Jack won the world title, becoming the first and only driver to win the title as a constructor as well as a driver. Now, uh, this car had the Repco engine fitted, and if I take the trumpet covers off here, you can have a really good look inside. It's absolutely stunningly well prepared. Um, an interesting period of time, uh, 1966 era, because what teams were starting to do was to use the engine and the gearbox to hold the rear of the car together, that whole kind of torsional structure. So we have the front of the chassis and then the engine and then the gearbox holding the back wheels on. And that was a development that really started around uh, the 1960s period and it really is oh, it's something that still happens today in our, our race cars uh, meaning the engine's doing a lot of work powering the car forward but also holding things together it looks absolutely lovely down here so well produced this car is a runner you can see um there is bits of oil leaking from both the gearbox and the engine underneath, but that's what happens with these cars. They are, of course, back from the uh, the mid to late 1960s. And this one was used um, in 1966 uh, to win the title. The BT19 was the car that Brabham started the series uh, the season with, but this one was used back by the end of the year. Also moving into 1967, the BT20 was used, again, giving Brabham another world constructors title. Now looking inside the car, relatively simplistic when we look inside, certainly in comparison to our modern day Formula One cars, you have a steering wheel that literally just turns the wheel. It doesn't have all the buttons and dials that we have today, but we have uh, rev counter, uh, we've got the uh, the water temperature bits there, and there's the uh, pressure gauges just on the uh, the side uh, in there. Um, you've got uh, seat belts that wouldn't have been quite like this. These ones have been put in for modern demonstrations of the car. Um, there's other little bits. If I take the camera right the way down here, I'm hopefully you're going to be able to see. It's got the dog leg gearbox to it. So uh, first gear sits right out to one side uh, because you only really you'd use first gear for the start and if you had to make a pit stop. Um, so the other gears that you would have moved through uh, from second to fifth and use those gears, that's why we have the dog leg box. Um, the car is quite frightening when you consider the speeds this car would have done uh, in excess of 150 mile an hour at circuits like the Nürburgring Spa um, with trees in places and things. Um, you sit inside the cockpit here, but you've got these aluminium boxes either side of you, and they go right the way down. If I take the camera right down here, you'll see these boxes go right the way down further inside the car. They are your fuel tanks, and they are essentially just an aluminium box. Um, so if you crashed in this car, it would have been pretty catastrophic because often the fuel tank would rip apart and the driver would be engulfed in a fireball. And it's absolutely true. Uh, Sir Jackie Stewart once said to be a Formula One driver in the uh, 60s, late 60s and 70s, uh, you had a life expectancy lower than that of a pilot in the Battle of Britain through the Second World War. And it was a truly dangerous, um, dangerous thing to be driving certainly didn't have the Kevlar fuel tanks that we use uh, in motorsport today or in Formula One in other motorsports today. And looking at these lovely uh, suspension wishbones, the detailing here is great. 
Obviously today we're using carbon fiber and titanium uh, for the different suspension components, but you can see everything being exposed. You can really see all the little elements of engineering. You've got the lovely brake uh, calipers and brake discs there, and the whole car just is so well prepared. There are little um, knocks and things on the uh, on the car in places when you see where the paint's cracked, but it's not uh, you know not an unexpected um, thing to have happen when you consider the age of this car. And it is, as I say, it's still a runner. It still does demonstrations at Goodwood. You can see uh, the 2023 Goodwood um, sticker just on the uh, side of the car here. It did uh, the run at the Festival of Speed. Uh, the exhaust pipes and bits here just so well manufactured and so well put together it is an absolute thing of beauty and yes it is dangerous as i say but it is absolutely stunning the noise this three liter v8 makes as well is absolutely glorious it's a real shame we can't start it up for you uh, here and now and again i'll take the other trumpet cover off this side and get a really good look at that engine it is stunning and yet yeah, it's a classic car very very valuable um, but a proper formula one car and looking how far formula one's come from the cars that we have today uh, from the cars uh, that we've got here for to the cars that we have today it really has come a long way but this uh, from a lot of point of views of engineering is where a lot of the basic techniques started it's a stunning looking car it's a privilege to be this close to it and be able to get you guys inside, get the camera right inside the car. It really is an absolutely lovely car.